I have an idea. You see the headset apparatus in the corner? You mean the cyberpunk gimp mask I've been pretending not to notice? It's called a neural bridge. We can use it to find schematics for that thing. Put it on. Okay, but for the record, my safe word is pineapple. Hey, hey, Andy here, bringing you another awesome Quest game review. Today we're looking at Resist, a hidden gem from developer Binary Mill, who you might have heard of from titles like Rush, Gun Club and Mini Motor Racing X. I was honestly expecting a lot more marketing to be done for a game like this. I mean, no game is 100% perfect, but Resist nails all of the things that make me want to jump back into a game again and again, making it worth the buy. Let me tell you about it. Let's start with the thumbnail, cause I wouldn't want you to feel like you were clickbaited, although with the gameplay you saw on screen up to this point, you probably get it. This game allows you to swing around like good old Spidey in a city full of skyscrapers, all that while dual wielding weapons having the ability to activate slow motion and engaging in some light hacking. I mean, what more do you want, is that not enough for you? Ok fine, you also have a jetpack, happy now? Resist is an open world title, meaning you'll be able to go wherever you want. You'll have to help the resistance take down the evil corporation that has framed you for an assassination that you didn't do. Although I guess that's the definition of framing someone, they're innocent, right? Oh well. The mechanics of this game are honestly superb, and you know I don't use that word often if you've watched any of my other videos, but like, dude, everything feels so fluid and natural, and it's running on a freaking quest too. Damn, son! Just as a disclaimer, it can take a bit of time to feel totally in control, and I'd recommend fiddling around a bit with the settings to get it just right for your style, because it can be a bit disorienting at first due to the insane amount of movement, but we'll talk about that a bit later. I mean, you could probably tell by now it's a very fast paced title, and while I'm already pretty much a veteran in VR so I never really get sick anymore, Resist has the potential to do that to new players, and let me tell you it's not pretty when it happens. Thankfully the game comes with all kinds of comfort options from vignetting to lowering the overall speed of the game, which I know sounds weird but really helps combat any motion sickness. Now, swinging off buildings and pulling off insane jumps and corners feels amazing, but we need some action, yo! Cue the drones! These pesky little suckers will be your most common enemies, they tend to stick together and come in waves. And your best bet to feel like you're totally not gonna die is to keep moving, use your jetpack to maneuver around them, and then when you're ready to send them to the scrapyard, activate that sweet slow-mo and show those suckers why they shouldn't mess with us humans. Then you'll also encounter bigger, tougher robots like this good boy right here. Who's a good boy? These bastards are of course way more difficult to take down and generally have weak spots you need to target before you can do any real damage. But once you get the hang of it, it feels really badass to swing around a building and take that creep down in slow motion. I haven't finished the entire game yet, but so far I have two weapons, dual pistols and dual shotguns, with a really sweet animation for switching between them. Both weapons can be upgraded through the in-game skill tree, which you'll be able to use to level up your gear as you earn points in the game by earning XP from missions and challenges, and there are plenty of both. It's your choice what you decide to upgrade, either stacking all of your points in the weapons department and making sure you're packing as much firepower as possible, or becoming a lot quicker on your feet, well, so to say, by getting mobility upgrades, like faster swinging, longer slow-mo charge and more jetpack fuel. Of course, you can always go with a balanced approach, but where's the fun in that, right? The game is really fun and immersive, and if I didn't have to edit this video, I would probably still be playing right now. Drop a like if you appreciate that. And to show you I always appreciate you back, I always give you guys the full truth. So let's talk about two things that I didn't really like about the game. My overall feedback is still great, but fixing these would make it really awesome. So while it is open world, the map isn't extremely big and starts feeling pretty familiar after a few hours in the game. But who knows, maybe they'll decide to launch expansions in time like they have with Gun Club. Fingers crossed. The enemy AI isn't great either, but honestly for this one I kinda understand the decision a bit. Because the game can feel pretty complex and it would have probably become a bit too much for a lot of beginners. If anyone from the devs ends up watching this, maybe put in 3 AI difficulty levels? Just saying. 
I hope this was useful, I really like the game overall and feel free to ask in the comments if you have any questions. Now check out this other video if you want to watch some more. I'll see you soon. Cheers guys!